The West Ohio Sports Network brings you high school football from a newly renovated Eager Stadium in Van Wert. Western Buckeye League football tonight between the Cougars and the Salina Bulldogs. Garrett Manson alongside Dave Bowen. And I'll tell you what, got a beautiful night. Got a league matchup of two unbeatens in the in the conference, Salina enters at 1-1 one one overall, Van Wert at 2-0, and oh, but both got league wins that first week, and now there comes the real test, Dave, because stacking wins in the league at this point of the year, it really starts to separate early. You're right, Garrett. And hey, it's great to be your wingman tonight for this outstanding WBL contest. Van Wert, as you said, 2-0, 1-0, 20-game home winning streak here at the newly renovated Eggers Stadium and they opened it up last week against Bath a victory 64 to 42 Salina with a victory in league play over St. Mary's 37 to 15 it's going to be as Keith Jackson yep. would say a good old good one I believe and that is exactly right last year this the game went to Van Wert 43 to 7 down at Salina Bulldogs were 6-5 and five a year ago, got to the postseason, thanks to six in a row that they scored from week three through week eight of last year, then lost their last two regular season matchups, lost in the first round of the playoffs. Van Wert went 12-2, and 8-1 and one of the WBL, just shy of their 20th conference title, and that went to Wapakoneta last year, lost in the regional finals to eventual D4 champion Cleveland Glenville, and hard to believe, you know, your Ted Ginns, your Troy Smiths, the, mm -hmm. the, the football players that have come from Glenville uh, and have played for Ted Ginn Sr. And finally got the trophy in the trophy case for Cleveland Glenville. But we're ready to kick it away. Van Wert is going to take the football first on their home turf here tonight. We'll get an early look at quarterback Brylon Parker, kind of their everything guy early in the football game. He definitely is, and this potent offense is something that Coach Brennan Bader for Salina wants to slow down this high tempo offense for the Cougars. As you said, Van Wert won last year. Van Wert has won the last four meetings. This much improved Salina crew, this Salina team, they would like to make a statement in the WBL tonight. And defense is one of their big strengths. The only two teams currently through the first two weeks to do it better is Elida, their stingy seven-point-a-game defense in the WBL, and Defiance, and a mutt opening kick, but picked up and returned, and the Bulldogs do make a statement while Van Wert has a little bit of a hiccup on the opening kickoff, eventually held on to by Aaron Reichert, and returns it to the eight, but the high-powered offense for Van Wert led by Brylin Parker. Some of the numbers for him, 70% throwing, of completing his passes, 583 yards, eight touchdowns, no interceptions. He's also rushed for five scores and run for 337 yards. And this offense, Dave, this is probably one of the most eye-popping number, but it's become the brand of the football here at Van Wert. But 530 yards of total offense per contest, as Parker has it on the first run of the game. Straight ahead for a couple, but 530 yards averaging through the first two weeks. Pretty eye-popping. Yeah, simply phenomenal. And again, the Salina Bulldogs, that's one of their keys. They've got to contain Brylin Parker, limit his run plays. We see him start right away with a quarterback draw right up the middle. Picks up a solid three yards at second down for the Cougars. And they'll split it out four wide as Parker with a give. And up the end of the middle, Keldon Bill with the keep for a couple more. It brings up third down at mid-range for Van Wert. Let's meet the big guys up front for the Cougars because we'll get to the skill guys throughout the night. But Morgan Bingham up front as a senior. Devin Story, offensive lineman as a senior too. Uh, Caleb Bledsoe, Carter Price, and uh, Christian Ackerman. Five seniors on that front line as Parker drops the throw. With some time, now he's flushed out thanks to some pressure. Fires to his left. It's going to be outside the boundary and incomplete. Trying to squeeze that one in to Gage Steeman along the sideline, and it's a three-and-out putt time for the Van Wert Cougars. Absolutely great defense there by Salina. Had Van Wert backed up because of the botched kick receiving, as far as receiving that kick, and Van Wert unable to do anything with it. Three-and-out for the Cougars. 
So back to punt this one away for Van Wertz. They put Gage Steeman back there, right in front of his own end zone. Averages 41 and a half yards per punt. And a line drive, and good job by the returner for Salina, Braylon Gabus, to not let that hit the turf, because if it did, it might have bounced the rest of the night towards the other end zone, but instead he is able to make positive yardage out of it. A flag came out as well. And Salina's field position currently at the 36 of Van Wert. We'll see if they're going to be helped or hindered by the penalty flag. You're right. That was a line drive. If Davis doesn't pick it up, it would still be rolling down to the wall, the iconic wall at the north end of Eger Stadium here in Van Wert. Just a beautiful facility. The turf, phase one, completed in time for the first home game last week against Bath. And we got a penalty against Salino, so that will march them back. It might be a situation. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, with the way they're walking, is Van we're going to maintain possession? Or are we going to kick it again? As they sort out the I can share the Barker. Our, okay. The illegal hands to the face against the Bulldogs. Must have been during the punt, so that will, when the penalty occurs, that's always the key on the result, and that will turn out to be a first down for Van Wertz via penalty, so an early, early gift for him. Our officiating crew, Josh Walters, Craig Cupper Bird, Gene Breidenstein, Kyle Height, David Lucas, and Barry Geringer. So Parker with the fake handoff and the keeper, and he gets ripped down. Looks like Dalton Chilcote in the middle to bring him down. Let's meet that Bulldog defense since we have a second opportunity to do so. The fellows up front, Dalton Chilcote, rest of the defensive line, Caden Merlin, Cameron Elson, a couple of seniors and a junior last mentioned. Defensive backs, Caleb Gavis, Braylon Gavis, Carver Harris, and John Lutz. Also have the linebackers, Carter Allstetter. Nice run there as Parker completes the pass to number two, Reese Crew. Enough for a Van Wert first down. Last uh, starters, Tucker Ackley. Corbin Lehman and Keenan Wurns rounds out the 11 for Salina. Parker quickly back. Excuse me, that goes out to Brylin Parker again. Near side left down at the 46 yard line. Almost got the whole chunk he needed on first down. So Van Wert continues to march up the field and a couple of explosive plays to start the the second life of this drive. Yeah, Parker makes a read there, does not give the ball to Bill. Not on this pass play, he does look to go to him, and that's a live ball, but it goes out of bounds. And they're going to call that just barely forward to be incomplete. So they're going to go with the incomplete pass. Didn't have a whistle right away, and the Salina players went after it hard. But again, this Van Wert, as you said, potent offense. You need a quarterback who can make reads, make decisions, and thus far in the season, Rylan Parker has done that at a level unsurmounted uh, by anyone. Direct snap right there. Goes to Bill. Nowhere to go. Backed up on third down. So now Salina needed to stand tough, and they did so. It's kind of an interesting part of the field, but Correct, it looks like yeah. Coach Keith Recker going to send out the punt unit for Van Wertz. Yeah, Coach Recker with the decision to go ahead and punt it away here. Basically a free drive, if you will, uh, but decides to punt it away here from his own 44-yard line. So steaming back again, punt goes up and it's a beauty. End over end, Davis calls for fair catch, has it at the 16 yard line and that is where Salina will take over with 8.48 to go in the first quarter. And it'll be at, again, their own at 16. We'll need their offense, led out by junior quarterback Bobby Morris here in his third week. They don't throw the ball a ton, but he is efficient when he does so. 9 for 10 passing this year, 80 yards uh, against St. Mary's anyway. He was 9 for 10. And looking at the season 
the season for him. 15 to 23 overall, a touchdown, three picks, 111 yards. But they like to run it. A couple of the top runners in the WBL in the backfield, and John Lutz gets the first tote of the night around the left edge. Lutz, 127 yards on the season. Still looking for his first score, but Braylon Gabus will be that other feature back back there. He has three rushing scores on 140 yards of offense. That's a 70-yard average per contest. Yeah. Diversification there with those three players back there, Morris, Lutz, and Gabus. We'll see all of them toting the luggage for the Bulldogs. Three receivers sent here for Salina, and Lutz with the fake. Moore is going to keep it right up the middle and quickly stuffed by the big front for Van Wertz. You have the 54 and the 65. That's Bingham and Bledsoe on the stop. Let's meet the O-line for Salina here briefly. Cameron Elson, Isaac Yanni, Dalton Chilcote, Jack Eichler, and then the anchor in the middle at center, Caden Merlin, 6-foot, 250-pound senior. So they'll spread it out. Moore this time going to send three receivers out far side. And he has Lutz, Lutz in the backfield. He makes the grab near the sideline. Does he have enough? He's had to just get beyond the 26. It's close, Dave. It sure we'll see is. with their micro. Yeah, and this is what Coach Bader wants to be able to do. Sustain drives, they do. Give them the first down, Salina. They want to sustain drives and on third down be very efficient. He's got to be real happy with that one right there to get the first down and keep the ball away from the Cougars. I really do think we'll see time of possession be huge for Salina. They're going to want to hold on to the ball and have slow, methodical, I should use the word slow, but methodical drives down the field. Some of those clock eaters yeah. for sure. And I think one of the strategies, too, when you have a high-powered offense is Xander Jones takes this one off and a good head of steam ahead of the 40. We have a team that can score as fast and furious as Van Wert can do. The adage goes, well, we got to shorten the game. And Salina, their, their level of play has a way of kind of tipping that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could say your best defense is that very consistent, methodical, chew-up yardage offense. Or basically, you could say Van Wert, their high-octane dragster, Salina, a NASCAR driver, you know, NASCAR going to, going to work at the Daytona 500. I'll be right ahead for Morris. Get a short gain on first down. Salina, first possession of the football game. Look at their leading receivers on the, from last year, excuse me here. Handful of their receivers that are out. Xander Jones, Braylon Gavis, Carter Allsnetter is at the tight end position tonight. As Morris takes the snap and looks at a good heave down the field, looking for Gavis, and he nearly brought that one in, but a lot of hand fighting back and forth. It was Reese what? Crew it's back on the. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Reese Crew has been an outstanding cornerback. Which way are they going to call it? Because they were both tangled up. If there had been music, you would have said they were dancing together. Braylon Gavis, intended receiver. And they are indeed going to rule pass interference on Van Wert. Makes it a fresh set of downs for Salina. They don't take that heave often, but they made it count right there. And now they're in pretty good field position, almost halfway through the first quarter. This is a nice toss by Morris. And again, let your athlete try and get after it out there. He draws the penalty. There's the fake to the end around for Caleb Gabus, and he takes off left end, and a pretty good chunk here for Morris. He gets tracked down outside the numbers. Devin Sori among those on the stop. Second down for Salina. Got a nice run off the left side. The offensive line doing work right there. Morris was able to get a good four or five yards before contact from the Van Wood defense occurred. And then he scratched two or three more out after the contact. Here comes the second down play. And it's a give up the gut. Parker Berkey appears to be on the carry. 
Again, right now, Salina is just playing a little bit of smash now football, attacking that defense of Van Wert. Defense, Van Wert has a lot of seniors out there, but a lot of seniors who didn't get much playing time last year. So uh, it's been a work in progress for Keith Recker. Yeah, you love senior laden teams, but they've had to gain some experience on the fly. They've done that up to this point. Right now, they got to bend their back a little bit and get tough there in the trenches. There's the Wildcat snap. It goes to Braylon Gavis off to the right side. Looks like he's got enough to move the chains at the 31. And Salina continues his inch down into Van Wert territory. Still looking for the game's first points on that Loudex Jewelry scoreboard tonight. And again, Salina just methodical here, keeping the football in their possession, marching it down the field. Coach Bader's got to be real pleased with this drive. Van Wert's got to do what they can to keep them out of the end zone. A little misdirection and a give to nice Lutz, play. but a negative play. Reichert and Nick Edwards. Aaron Reichert, great pursuit. Coming from the linebacker position, filling the gap, and taking down the Salina ball handler. Other linebackers, Aaron Dowdy, Colin Haggerty in the starting lineup for Van Wert. Up front for the Cougars defensively, Fletcher Smith, Morgan Bingham, Devin Story, and Caleb Bledsoe, the DBs. We mentioned Reese Crew already. Gage Steeman, Bradlin Parker, and looking for one more, Donovan Winklejohn. And that's the defensive alignment to start the game for Van Wert tonight. Little screenplay for Braylon Gabus. He's near the sticks again. Real nice design play there for Salina as Gabus comes right across the back of the offensive line. Morris finds him. Good blocking on the edge. Potential for it hold out there on the edge. It happens a lot in high school football. Salina offensive uh, linemen do a nice job of blocking without uh, doing it illegally. Good play for the Bulldogs. Just like that, Dave, they've had the football for a little over five minutes and we are approaching the end of the first quarter as Lutz with a nice shifty move to the left and sprints towards that 10-yard line. He's tripped up, but the, the chain gang getting a workout on this drive as Salina well inside the red zone and knocking on the doorstep. They're at the 12. Yeah, great run by Lutz there. He looked to go inside, drew the defensive end in, and then was able to pop it out. The real athletic move there to get around the edge. And definitely inside the red zone now for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs break the huddle. And Morris has him lined up. Lutz is in the backfield with him. Snap the hand to Lutz. Nearly shedded one tackler, but a gang of Cougars finds him in the backfield for no gain. That gang of Cougars led by Devin Story, number 57, the six foot, 255 pound senior. Johnny on the spot, right there for the Cougars. Second and Call it 10, but that yard marker just a touch behind the chains. Negative play on, not really a negative play, but not much movement on first down. See what Selena does. They'll split out four this time. And the snap for Morris. He looks right, now comes back to the left, incomplete, looking for that left sideline along in there in the end zone. Braylon Gabe is the intended man. He was Connor a, Campbell on the coverage out there. He was draped all over him. Great, great coverage defensively by Campbell for the Cougars. Yabus, one of a couple returning all WBL players for Salina. Here comes a third down play from the 12. Big play for both teams early in the early going here. Garrett Morris on a roll, looking for space. Nobody over across the middle. Flag is down, and the throw is short near the goal line. Let's see what the laundry is over. Looks like it's going to go against Salina. Illegal shift, I believe, against the Bulldogs. I would think that Van Wert would deny that here, or decline it, excuse me. That ball didn't come out of Morse's hands real clean. Yep. Nose was down. 
His, his first option was definitely covered up as getting a look at that again on our simplified floor against the replay. See if Salina decides to bring Zach Greber out for a field goal attempt. Greber pretty sure-footed, four of four on the season with a long of 29 yards. So they've gotten him down to the doorstep and he's been able to punch it through for points. All of both of those kicks. And that looks like that's what they're going to do. It, you know, you're, you're basically fourth and ten. You can get a first down. You, you're going to need to score touchdowns against this Vanward offense, but right now I think this is a great decision to try and put three on the board. This attempt will be from 30 yards out of the hold of Bobby Morris. It's down. It's away. Is it through the pipes? And it is. It's 3-0 Salina. Thanks to the boot for Zach Graber. The senior kicker has the Bulldogs out in front. With a minute 51 left in the quarter, we'll take our first time out and return to high school football in WOSN. Lavix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jewelry for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon here in Van Wert or at loudix.com. During that last break, chance to flip through the completely redesigned WOSN app. Make sure you download the new app and never miss your favorite team's scores. First crack on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard goes to Salina thanks to a 30 yard field goal by Graber and Van Wert back with the football. Down three at home, but you know, Dave, they had a chance to get some a second opportunity on Van Wert's first possession. And the one thing I want to look out for here is the guys that have been going both ways because they just got worn down and were on the field for a lot of snaps during their that first defensive drive. You're exactly right there. We see Brylan Parker keeping the ball going up the middle. Reese Crew with that run back on the kick. Got it up to the 25-yard line. And a nice run there by Parker to get the Van Wert offense started. So that'll be second down, call it three. As Parker looked quickly to his right and immediately tucked it and ran. Flag comes in from behind the play. It's gonna be holding against the Cougars. That'll knock him back 10. So on that scoring drive for Salina, they, Morris was two for three for 14 yards. Uh, rushing, they had 10 rushing plays for 47 yards. And uh, and as a result, they get the three points and lead this game here towards the end of the first quarter, Garrett. One of the big important plays during that drive was that long pass interference penalty on Van Wert that put the Bulldogs in Cougar territory. Here's Parker and he finds his man open right at the sticks. Kylan Haggerty hauls it in right at the first down marker. He went down to his knees and was able to secure that football, his first grab of the evening. Yeah, Parker rolls out to his right, and Haggerty sits down right in the middle of that zone, finds the open area. He finds the open area. Parker finds him. First down, Van Wert. There's a fake on the end around. Parker will keep it. Right up the middle he goes, and not a whole lot to go as that pile starts to get jammed up with white jerseys. Again, you'll take the, those four, five yards. Right up the middle as Brylan Parker, as you said, faked the handoff and then saw what he wanted to. Again, a positive play for the Cougars. They get right back up to the line, this high tempo offense. There's Parker around the left and he is met immediately. Once he hit the second level of the defense, Braylon Gabus and Parker had a head on head to collision at the 46. They did, but not before. Parker's able to pick up a first down. It'll be first and 10 Cougars on their own 46 yard line. And that looks like it's gonna be the final play of the first quarter. Cougars trailing 
The Bulldogs from down the road in Salina in this Western Buckeye League crash th clash three to nothing. After our first quarter of play here from Eager Stadium, we'll take our next time out and return for more from Van Wert. Start of the second quarter in Van Wertz. Rolling the throw, Rylan Parker has some men downfield, but doesn't have time to get it off. He's met quickly. Good pursuit from Tucker Ackley, returning first teamer in the Western Buckeye League a year ago. Yeah. He has a big stop. Yeah, Tucker Ackley right there. That was fundamentally sound. He broke down, was in stance, and was able to maintain contact with Brylan Parker and bring him down. Great defensive play by the linebacker. Here's second down and 10 for Van Wertz. They'll spread it out. Parker, little dish to Connor Campbell. Gets around the edge outside the numbers before he is upended by Caleb Gabus near midfield. Good pursuit by the Bulldogs. Again, Van Wert trying to stretch the field, find some gaps, make Salina work on defense, but right now that was a real good play by the Bulldogs. Brings up a third and long. Campbell, the leading receiver on this Van Wert team, I believe that's his first grab of the football game. As Parker in some danger, goes back to old reliable again. This time it's across the 40-yard line and enough for a first down. And in fact, had the numbers mixed up. That's Colin Haggerty. Some of these black numbers at the pad, the, yes. at the, the the great. chest pad yeah. pulled in. Yep. So. Great pass and catch there. Ryland Parker, again, just patient as he's rolling out, waited for his receiver to open up. He did. They connect. And now Salina, because that offense is moving so potently, they're going to take a timeout, catch their breath. And we will do the same. 10.36 to go here from Van Wertz. And we'll be back with more with the Cougars driving on WOSM. Ryland Parker back. In the shotgun for the Van Wert Cougars as they are driving fresh set of downs out of the Salina timeout. Their first of three. Parker goes off left edge near the 30, fresh into the second quarter. But Dave, let's back up to that first quarter and see how these two offenses churned it out. Yeah, Salina with the 3-0 lead. Bobby Morris was two for three for 14 yards. Team rushing, they rushed 10 times for 47 yards. They had two penalties for a total of 15 yards. Van Wert. Ryland Parker, two for four passing for 22 yards. As a team, they rushed six times for 33 yards, and they had the one penalty for 15 yards. Back the throw here on second down. Good protection and even better coverage downfield. Now Parker is able to get it away out to Campbell inside the 20. Connor Campbell just came free, straight across the turf. A combination there for the Van Wert offense. The, the line did a real nice job of protecting Parker. There was nobody open, and then when he did get flushed out of the pocket, he was able to find Campbell. Great game for the Cougars. First down again. Parker calls his own number once more. Pushes ahead inside the 10-yard line. They can get a first down down around the four-yard line, so that's why you see Coach Recker and his offense going with the run initially, and they pick up five, make it a short second and five. Parker readies. Haggerty in the tight end spot, and there's fake end around to kill. And Parker nearly broke it inside the 10 at a touchdown saving stop on the tandem of Braylon Gabus and Wesley Graber. But that's going to be enough for a first down, so the Cougars have four opportunities to punch it into the end zone. Here's Parker to keep it from the three. A flag comes in from behind. Parker can't crack the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a hold on Van Wehr. That'll push him back. That's going to be a negative play, not what you want to have down there inside the five-yard line. The Van Wert offense, own worst enemy right there with that call. Salina's going to take advantage of it and push the Cougars back. You know, 
Rylan Parker, you talk about all conference selections. He was an all Ohio selection at running back last year. Again, they had a, a kid by the name of Aiden Pratt running the offense and what a great guy to learn from and work with and Parker's <laughs> taken right off from where Pratt left off. And that seems to be the tradition right now at Van Wert, at least the recent one. Owen Treese helped lead this team to a state championship mm -hmm. in 2020. Pratt picked up where he left off and several deep runs with him as the starting quarterback. And here Parker takes the reins in 23, off to a great start as well. And a whole host of first and second teamers in the WBL from a year ago that are no longer part of this program. And Dave, so far, seems like offensively, they've and on the defensive side, you know, they were bend, don't break on that scoring drive by Salina. But it seems like everything is as it was, is still trying to find the rhythm here this evening as they talk over this penalty marker. Yeah, that's going to be a personal foul against Salina. Again, hands to the face. So what the yellow flag taketh, the yellow flag giveth back as far as one penalty going against the Cougars down here and then the next one going against the Bulldogs. So we line it up again from the five yard line, first and goal. Second hands of the phase penalty tonight on Salina. One took away a punt return and this time it opens up the opportunity for a short touchdown run for Brightland Parker, but there's another flag that did come in and that wipes the touchdown away. It was Second a nice, holding yeah, call on exactly. Drive. A nice hole there for Brightland Parker but obviously, the hole created via illegal means, if you will, Garrett, because holding's the call, and we're gonna push it back again. If they dynamited it to open that up, didn't they? And now the Cougars will hit the reset button from the 14. Still first down. Chain Gang has the sticks on the turf, and it is goal to go for Van Wert. Parker all around the right. He spins and is met by Tucker Ackley. He'll push him back, senior a, at linebacker. A run the whole way. Brylan Parker tucked it right away, not thinking pass at all. Unable to come up with much as far as real estate is concerned on that play. Makes it second and goal. Eight minutes before the half. Van Wert still a zero on the scoreboard. Here's the end around for Keldon Bill. He's dancing along the sideline, and he's shoved out inside the five. That will set up third and goal, but that's pretty manageable right there. Maybe two-point conversion territory, Dave. Yes, a real nice, nice positive play for the Cougars to give themselves Ooh. an opportunity with two downs remaining to punch it in. I don't know. I think if I'm going to say right now, if they don't get it here, they're going to go for it on fourth down. And Parker? To the left, and he's just angling to keep his knees off the off the turf, but good penetration from a Salina. Yeah, Parker, hard to bring down there. Very elusive, slipping and sliding. And here's that fourth down play right at a yard from the end zone, and it looks like the Cougars are going to go for it. Trying to get the lead for the first time in the football game. As that Waldex Jewelry scoreboard Tipping the Salina Bulldogs direction for the time being in their defense hole. Here's the snap. Parker, a fake up the middle, and he is stopped short of the line to gain. Is there any flags down? There are not. A great, and the Bulldogs yes, take over. A great defensive stand by Salina right there. Van Wert denied a host of Bulldogs. Ring down Parker again. A designed run from the get go and the Salina defense was not fooled. They attacked Parker, attacked the pigskin, and they are jacked up on the visitor side of the football field. So Salina takes over, and with this kind of a, an offense, look at the clock down there, it reads 7.08, and they can kill a lot of time given the amount of yardage they have to go down the field. Here's the hand up, up the middle for Parker Berkey. Yeah, and Coach, Coach Bader would love to just have a long, sustained drive like they did in the first quarter, eat up the majority of this clock. 
even to the point where if you ate up the whole clock and didn't score but got a field goal, he would take that. Now, last year, the score was 7-0 to at halftime in favor of Salina, and then Van Wert went on to score 43 unanswered points. But new year, right now, Salina, great defensive stand, and now they're looking to move the ball on offense. Morris with the give. Goes. This sounded looks like that was Berkey again. And it might have been all center. Carter all center wears number eight. But you're right, those single numbers in the front of the jersey, sometimes they crimp up underneath the shoulder pads. It is hard to decipher a little bit. I feel for you, Garrett. Doing my best. I tell you what though, the 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 backs of the Van Wert jerseys, beautiful. Big contrast. That's what we need to be teaching here. Jeff Sweet to the right. Xander Jones. You know you have some ADs that tune in from, from now and then. When you're approving uniforms, sometimes less is more. Keep us in mind, we right? Can, we can help see who mm -hmm. is who. Uh, second down and medium here for Salina. Yep, they'll take that first down gain of five yards. Going to have Berkey in the backfield with Morris. Takes the give, Morris to throw, nowhere to go that direction, and that pocket just collapsed on him. Sandwiched up between by Devin Story and the other member of the sack, Fletcher Smith. First time we've called Fletcher Smith's number tonight, but yeah, he and Story on the right side of that defensive line pushed the offensive lineman back. Morris couldn't find his receiver, so somewhat of a coverage sack right there, but a nice job by the Cougar defense pushing the ball back to make it third and 10. A big third down here for the Bulldogs. The huddle breaks with the team from Solana up on the scales right now. Third and long. And this time Morris to tuck and run. Look at the opening in the middle of the field. And he's still on his feet past the 35 and a first down. Morris, they might have had a Van Wert really on their toes that time because he did not waste any time tucking that ball and taking off. Yeah, great run by the quarterback. We're seeing both quarterbacks take the opportunity to rush it when it presents itself. Morris does so right there. A lot of times that's the one guy the defense isn't uh, assigned to, and Morris makes him pay right there. Fake on the give, and this is the keeper from Braylon Gabus around the right side. Across the 40. And we talked about Gabus as the Wildcat quarterback a little bit. They haven't done that a whole lot tonight. Last week against St. Mary's is when they broke it out, and they used it quite effect effectively against the Rough Riders. Again, not as much tonight, but again, it's only their second offense, po offensive possession yep. of the game here, and we're in deep in the second quarter already. Yeah, Van Wert has not been able to get him off the field with the exception of the field goal attempts. From 30 yards, that is our only score of the game. Van in motion, and Play is going to get whistled dead and a timeout for Salina at the 3.34 mark of the second quarter. We'll take the breather also. You're watching high school football in a tight one here from Van Wert, WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. Pass right out of the timeout, incomplete off the fingertips. Xander Jones. Salina moving the ball with a couple of big plays on this drive, Dave, as we get back into things. Three and a half to go before half. This is a big third down for Salina, looking to garner some momentum or keep it. Really put Van Wert on their heels before the start of halftime. You're right, and talking about momentum, you know, Van Wert is averaging 55 points per game. Salinas got to be really pleased they've been able to keep them off the scoreboard thus far. Caleb gave us the man in motion. There's the fake from Braylon, and he's free down the sideline at the 40-yard line. One man to beat, and he's shoved down by Connor Campbell. 
At the 26, a huge gainer on third and four by Braylon Gavis. Well-designed play, and the big fella's able to be flight of foot around that outside, and they're actually going to mark him a out of bounds earlier than we had anticipated. This is going to be in Van Wert territory at the 33. Yeah, Connor Campbell with the touchdown saving tackle pushing gave us out of bounds. Gave us rumbling, stumbling, and bumbling around that right side. At first, I didn't think he was going to get anything, and then he was able to pop through with the big game. Here's the end around for Caleb Gavis, and he's tripped up in the backfield. Gage Steeman. Drops Salina back for a loss on first down. And now this is interesting territory for Salina. But, Dave, that's a play the Van Wert defense really needed. Yes, a great play by Gage Steeman, the 6'2", 170-pound senior. And you're right, that's the kind of play, a loss of four, five yards here that pushes Salina behind the sticks. And with their offense, run dominated, that's the one thing they don't want to do is get behind the sticks. Big, big defensive stand right here for Van Wert needs to occur. Lutz gets the carry. Not a whole lot of space around the right end, but he's able to get a couple of yards back. So third and long, third and nine. I think you're in two down territory if you're a Salina Bulldog fan. You don't need to get all of it with this third down. You'll take it, obviously, if you can. But you're, I think you're in position. You're going to go for it on fourth down if you don't get it. Looks like you had Nick Edwards along with Donovan Winklejohn among a couple others in on the stop. Two-minute mark of the second quarter. Third down for Salina. Morris fakes to the left, goes to Lutz on the right side. And stop for not much at all. Colin Haggerty among the tacklers. Real good play defensively by Van Wert. Misdirection. Morris looked to his left. Tried to get the Van Wert defense to shift that way. Good disciplined football by the Van Wert D as he came back to his right and led by number nine for Van Wert. That would be none other than uh, who? Colin Haggerty. They took him down. So fourth and eight. And again, Salinas going to keep their offense on the field. Fourth down and seven. 80 seconds left in the half, and Dave, each team has only had the football still twice. Hard to believe. Yeah, and again, Coach Bader's got to be real pleased with that. He let the play clock run all the way down, and he's going to take his third time out here. Fourth and seven to go. Going to draw one up, try and get that conversion. And we'll take the break as well. 118 here before the half. 3 nothing Salina on WOSN. Salina with the football in Van Wert territory, and it's fourth down. Bobby Morris dropping the throw. Four verts down the field, and it's intercepted by Van Wert. Gage Steeman steps in front of the pass and secures it for the Cougars, and now they have a minute 12 before halftime to go down and try to get some points. Yeah, Gabe Steeman with the great play there, read the quarterback, steps in front of the receiver, pulls it in. Steeman, two big plays on that set of downs. The tackle behind the line of scrimmage, which put Salina behind the chains, and then the turnover right there. Takes away any hope for Salina to score on that drive. And a minute 12 to go for the Cougars. And they have all three timeouts left. They could do something right here, Garrett. Brylin Parker rolls out, finds his man, Connor Campbell. Gets out of bounds at the, just over the 30. That'll help the clock management. A gain of eight on the play. Only took six seconds. Again, this is going to be a fun drive to see how Van Wert runs their offense here and how Salina tries to counter this high-octane offense by the Cougars. Parker just surveys. Now he has to run to keep the play going. Incomplete into the sideline. That time shaved seven seconds off the clock and a third and two coming up. 
Real nice play there as far as just getting rid of the football by Brylin Parker, a mature decision. Sometimes quarterbacks got to make that play, got to make that play. No, get rid of that one, live for another day. Third and short, look to get the first down here and reset. And Parker will keep it, trying to get that first down. He does. That'll stop the clock whenever he does go down. Ridden down to the stop by Dalton Chilcote. Clock stops at 51 seconds. Again, still three timeouts for the Cougars. At the close of the first half. And Parker quickly back to work. And caught it out of bounds for Reese Crew. Pick up about seven. And they are not wasting any time. They get right back to the football. Yep, even with the clock being stopped by going out of bounds, they're looking to keep this offense moving quickly. Parker will look left this time. Trouble and a man steps up and nearly taken down for a sack, but the initial pressure again came from Chilcote and it was Allsnetter that eventually gobbled him up. So good pursuit by Salina right there. Brings Parker down. The Cougars are going to take a timeout. Their first one of the half. So we'll take a timeout. Also 34 seconds to go before Half time here from Van Wertz. Final 34 seconds of the first half at Eggers Stadium in Van Wertz. Cougars with the football, still looking to get on the scoreboard. Third down play, and it's a going to be a bill run around the left side and near midfield. Good blocking by the left side of that offensive line. Interested to see if if uh, Parker looks to stretch the defense, although the safeties are deep for Salina, and Van Wert's going to take another timeout. Interesting timeout right there coming off the, the game for the first down. You might want that one back with 25 seconds to go. But, you know, even if Van Wert doesn't score here, Garrett, they're still making the Salina defense work very, very hard um, here at the end of the half, and that could pay dividends down the road in the second half, maybe fourth quarter. Yeah, very, very true. And looked like some, uh, maybe some wires got crossed to start that drive. And they had those timeouts. They have one left. There's 25 seconds to go. If you pick up another first down, you know, then you might have an opportunity to really give it a heave. A couple of important plays coming up here with precious time on, on the clock. Parker. Chilcott is able to get some pressure, but a long throw down for Campbell, and it's off his fingertips inside the 10. Good coverage by Gabus. Clean play. And it's second down with 17 ticks left on the clock. Yeah, that's Caleb Gabus back there on that one, twin brother. Um, but on that play right there, they had a man. Parker shows the arm strength, gets it down the field, just unable to come up with a good defense by the Bulldogs. Second and 10. And Parker's second down snap. Rolls out to the right on this play, and it's a little high for Crew to handle. Good defense by number five back there for Salina. That's Carver Harris. Again, Van Wert wants to get the ball out in space, try and make someone miss, and then get that big, big game, that big play. They, they chart big plays. How many big plays do we get versus our opponent? Last week against Bath, they had 13, and Bath had nine. They won the big play battle tonight. It hasn't been uh, that way for either team. It's been methodical. Here's Parker on a keeper on third down, gobbled up at midfield. It's Chilcott and Altsnetter on the stop. And that's going to take us to the half. Again, a really, really... Defensive-minded battle here in the first half, Garrett. Not what we expected. And uh, again, we still may see fireworks in the second half, but right now, Van Wert's high potent offense being held down. Salina, they uh, have got to be very, very happy. And it's going to be a point of discussion in the in the in the locker room. We were here last year, guys. We were here last year. We got to play two halves. Absolutely right, and I'm sure eyebrows around the WBL at halftime are going to be raised here in a defensive back and forth through the first two quarters. 3-0 Solana on the Lodox Jewelry scoreboard as we take our timeout. Return to third after this on WOSN.
WOSN bringing you Western Buckeye League football here on a Friday night. First of September, week number three, Van Wert and Salina, and it is the one and one Bulldogs with a three nothing lead over the Cougars. 30 yard field goal by Zach Graber, the only points on our Lawnix Jewelry scoreboard here at Mansfield and Dave Bowen bringing you the action tonight. And Dave, you look at the back and forth, the numbers turn out to be pretty even across the board. However, you had a couple of plays. You had an interception that took away a Salina drive. You had penalties that took away big plays and you had a goal line stop by Salina. You just had so much happening in that first half to bring us to on the board just reads three nothing. You're exactly right, Garrett. It's It's been a slobber knocker and the stats are even, as you said, third down conversion. Salina five for seven, Van Wert four for seven. Salina has 11 first downs, Van Wert 12 first downs. For Salina, Bobby Morris two for seven for 28 yards. Braylon Gabus one for one for five. John Lutz three rushes for 11. Bobby Morris two rushes for 28. Braylon Gabus, five rushes for 45 yards, and then he also has a catch for 10 yards, and John Lutz, one catch for five. For Van Wert, Brylon Parker, seven for 12 for 70 yards. He's rushed the ball 16 times for 58 yards. Connor Campbell, three receptions for 27 yards. Colin Haggerty, two for 16 yards. And Reese Crew, two receptions for 17 yards. It is the epitome of the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. 3-0, Woody and Bo would be proud. Yeah, yes, they would. Landon Frieden has the football on the tee for the first time tonight for Van Wert. Yeah, and thank you to Brad Hughes, our stat man, for all of those halftime stats. Line drive kick picked up by the Bulldogs. This is Xander Jones on the return, and he'll get just in front of the 30-yard line, and the Bulldogs of Salina with the lead and the ball. They yeah. moved it pretty well. They just, have, they, like, as we see, they haven't been able to quite punch it in, but they have really milked some time off the clock. Yeah, Coach Bader's got to be real pleased with that first half. Very happy and getting the ball here, the first possession. I'm sure he's talked to his team about let's put some points on the board right away here, this first possession, and have momentum on our side from the onset of the third quarter. Junior quarterback Bobby Morris, the snap. And they're going to call that an incomplete pass. He had enough and just scooped it ahead and fell to the turf by rule that indeed is forward pass. And now it wasn't pretty, no. but it's going to be second and ten. All about timing right there. You know, again, the snap from the center was low, and as a result, the timing was off. I think Morris was going to hand that ball off uh, to the, the man on the jet sweep. I believe that was... Um, Bill, or um, excuse me, John Lutz coming across there, unable to do so, and now they're going to bring in the Wildcat quarterback, number four, Braylon Gabus, on this particular play. Uh, they're going to. They are going to. Yep, legal procedure penalty. Okay. After the facts. Obviously, you want to be clean coming out of halftime. Salina unable to do that on the first play from scrimmage. The, the positive, the icing on the cake, it's still first down. First and 15. So here Gavis calls for the man in motion. Keep it himself. Barrels ahead near the 29. A lot of gray shirts in on the stop as the pile halts a couple of yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. You know, if you're Coach Recker, I think even though Saline had two long drives, you got to be pleased with how your defense has played. And your offense, you're going to need to make some adjustments. They focus on getting guys in space. Salina has been able to keep them bottled up here in the first half. They got to make those adjustments when they get the ball. Near side toss, incomplete, low and intended for Xander Jones. And all of a sudden you blink and it's third down and 12 for Salina. Yeah, this is a huge play right here. Van Wert, they feel the momentum going their way as their crowd rises to the feet. The Cougar faithful cheering on their team to hold the Bulldogs right here and force a punt.
Here's a snap, and Morris looking down the field. He has Gabus. Had him lined up, but an even better play defensively. Connor Campbell rolled over there and knocked it out of the air. Yeah, Connor Campbell's had a good night defensively, and right there, knocks one away again. And if you're a Cougar fan, you couldn't be any happier than you are right now, forcing Salina into a punt. Three and out for the Bulldogs. And barely a minute off the third quarter clock. These two punters, Xander Jones, the senior for Salina, he leads the WBL, 44.7 yards per game. Gage Steeman for the Cougars, he's second in the league at 41.5. It's a high spiraling punt. Good punt. And it's Parker on the return. And he's cut down at the 36. Nice job, number five for Salina there first. That's Carver Harris. Great punt. Almost to the point where you could say he outkicked the coverage, but he put it in a position where he had Parker hemmed in with that punt. The Salina defense, good pursuit. It's going to be first down for the Cougars, and they are on their own 36 yard line. So, Brylan Parker lead his group back out. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the Cougars do, what adjustments they have made at halftime with, again, this high-octane offense trying to get on the board. And a quick out and nearly intercepted off the fingertips of Reese Crew, and yet a diving Caden Werns trying to make a spectacular play along the sideline, but turns out to be just a, a nothing play for Van Wert. So again, we're, Salina's using the majority of the play clock the Cougars, they want to get the snap off with 25 seconds left on it. They do right there. Keldon at Bill with a dive ahead. That'll shorten up this third down coming up. And it is a big one. Third and a short six, if you will, Garrett. Again, a big, big play here early in the third quarter for the Cougars. Man, we're going to audible out of this play after the hard counts. Parker has everybody lined up and ready. And they'll look to throw. Parker stepping up and got out of a tackle, still on his feet. And a gang tackle on the outside edge by Salina. It looked like that Parker run, as soon as he got to the edge, was going to be cut down immediately. But he stayed alive, got a couple more out of it. But even better pursuit from Salina to put the Van Wert punt team back on the field. Yeah, great pursuit by the Bulldogs. A host of Bulldogs tackle Parker there over on the far side, forcing Van Wert into the punt situation. Coach Recker thought a little bit about going for it, but going to play it safe, kick it away. It's in the air. Gabus calls for the fair catch. Wants it right in a favorable position, and Salina will start the new drive at the 25 with 9.32 left in this third quarter. Another stat we didn't bring out from the first half, Van Wert with 137 yards of total offense, Salina with 145. Van Wert averages 530 yards a game, Garrett, first in the WBL. Salina's defense has played well, and they've also offensively kept Van Wert off the field in yes, order to have. keep that yardage down. 55 and a half points per game for the first two weeks of the season for the Cougars, and zero through two plus quarters to this point. Now we have a little extracurricular activity after the play. Short run for Xander Jones. Positive yardage on that first down play for Salina. Good pursuit by the Cougars off the left edge. This will be Lutz and Gavis in the backfield. Gavis will receive the snap and a fake to Lutz. Right, right down the shoot he goes, but quickly stops. Still on his feet though. Great second effort. Gavis kept the legs a churning. Yeah, Morgan Bigham made contact with him in the backfield, but as you said, he kept battling and able to come up with positive yardage. 
Big play for the Bulldogs right there to make it a third and short. In high school football, this is one where, again, they're going to go up under center. Now he's going to back up now. All right, a little bit of motion and movement. Give the Cougars a different look. Reorganized with Gabe is still back there needing just a yard. He has it. And yeah, they're going to blow the play dead. It looked like they were setting up that run around the left. I think we're going to have movement on the Salina offensive line. That's the fourth Salina penalty of the game. Again, they went with a different look there, Garrett, and unfortunately the only uh, group that they confused was themselves as a result with the penalty occurring. Sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. And in high school football, I was about to say as they were lining up, sometimes, again, just going north and south is what you want to do. That's what the end result was going to be right there, but with the motion and movement, they ended up picking up the penalty. This is Morris looking to throw, still with some space, fires it towards Lutz. He caught it along the sideline. Did he get a foot down? Yes, he did at the 36-yard line. A I, high wire act by Lutz along the boundary. Yeah, John Lutz, I really focused on him on that play. He was a blocker initially, and then when Morris rolled out to his left, he released, and then Morris was able to find him for that first down. Real, real good play by those two guys to get the first down for Salina. Seven and a half to play in quarter three. Bulldogs with a fresh set of downs and the lead. Junior quarterback Bobby Morris returns to the shotgun. And there's the give. Parker Bernke carries the load over the 40. The contrasting styles where Van Wert's trying to pick you apart on the edge, out in the flat a little bit. The Bulldogs, they're coming right at you up the middle, but yet it's a delayed handoff. There's always just a little bit of timing there where the offensive lineman can get into the defense a little bit more, allowing those seams to open up. And right there we see a nice run on first down from the Bulldogs. Second and four to go. Heavier bunch. And a late give to Berkey. He gets around the right side and across midfield. Plenty for a first down. You know, Salina's doing what Van Wert has done to team after team after team. They're wearing down this Van Wert defense a little bit. Just, again, it's bad medicine, Bon Jovi style in a good way if you're a Bulldog fan. Just how they're, they're picking and prodding and and that defensive line for the Cougars are starting to really show some wear and tear here in early going in the third quarter, <laughs> which is really halfway over already. Yep. Let's go, so they hit half, the halfway point down the turf. Back to Berkey. Full head of steam as he hits the, the defensive backs being pinned up along the outside edge. So after a quick series by both teams to begin the third quarter, now we see this sustained drive by Salina, what we saw in the first half, a mirror image of those two drives. They're just, again, plotting away in a positive way. Uh, Coach Bader's got to be real pleased with his, with his offensive line, the big uglies, if you will, opening up these holes. Little pitch to you, Graber. And the Cougars pack up. And stop that play. Third and long now for Salina. Near midfield and a whole host of them down there for great, the gray and gray. Yeah, great play there by the Cougar defense. Third and 10, right at midfield. Call it the 49 on Van Wert's side of the field. But this is a huge play for the Bulldogs. If they don't get a first down, I say if they get within three yards, they may try and go for it. Let's see what they do right here. Morris, he's got some time. And a timing route caught by Xander Jones and a couple of broken tackles. Little simple out route near the sideline. Jones got into space, perfectly timed and delivered by Morris. And just like that again, it's like a broken record almost tonight. Dave Salina converts another first down. And 
Here they march on down the field. Big third down play for the Bulldogs, and as you said, a perfect timing route. We had a great view of it. The ball was in the air. Reese Crew defensively did everything he could for the Cougars, but unable to keep that ball from being caught by his counterpart, number two for this offense, Xander Jones. Keeper for Graber. Short pickup. Campbell there on the stop on yeah. the outside. Connor Campbell does a nice job shedding his block and taking down the quarterback, Braylon Gabus. It, they're very seamless with their two quarterback uh, situation here with Salina. You've got Morris and Gabus. They do a nice job. A lot of schools are like, oh, we got to have one guy. We got to have one guy. This Salina offense, they're very, very seamless in having both of those guys at the command. Morris hands it to, it looks like Berkey. Nowhere to run on second down. So here we are again, another big third down for both schools. Van Wert needs a stop. I do think again, where we're at right here on the field is probably two down territory for the Bulldogs, but they want to gain positive yardage on this particular play if they don't pick up the first down it in and of itself. Both teams traded punts out of the half. This is Salina's second possession of the quarter. They've made a big chunk down the field. And there's the reverse. Jones actually looking to throw the ball downfield, and he unloads, and it is incomplete. Just out of the reaches of Caleb Davis. But a little gadget play from the Salina Bulldogs on third down. Tried to go for it all. And it developed. They had an opportunity to throw the football downfield, Dave. Yeah, and you got to tip your cap to Donovan Winklejohn, the defensive back for the Cougars, a six foot, 150 pound junior, did not leave his responsibility, stayed disciplined, and he was in good coverage there. And now we're going to see a field goal attempt. It's going to be a 44 yard attempt for the Bulldogs. Graver already knocked one through from 30. Kick is on its way. Does it have enough? And it's going to be just short. Gave it a great effort, but just short. And the Van Wert defense holds. 3.02 left in the third quarter. Three to nothing remains your score. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Lowry's Jewelry, your family owned and operated a jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them today at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Van Wert able to hold defensively in the long missed field goal try just short for Salina. So the score remains 3-0 on that Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Van Wert coming out on offense right, right away with the up-tempo. Brylin Parker going around the left side. Runs a long distance, but picks up three yards there. Again, the Cougars want to unleash this offense. The Bulldog defense has stymied it all night long. A little hard counts and some reshuffling along the offensive front for Van Wert. Now Parker with a sling out to Reese Crew. And he cannot escape the tackle of John Lutz. Does put up a fight, though. Yeah, John Lutz with the tackle, but again, that was a film room defensive play right there because the Salina defense had great pursuit, read the play before it occurred, and bottled up that play for a short game. Two minutes to go in the third quarter and still a goose egg next to the Cougars here on the scoreboard. Parker starting to see some pressure, steps through it, and he's still on his feet. Parker scrambles. Look at him staying alive to the 30, diving for a first down. That was some good, a good piece of the quarterback position for Brylin Parker. He escaped the heavy, heavy pressure. But he was oiled up, 
snuck through there and got all the yardage he needed. Oiled up is right. He slid through there, slipped through there, did a great job to get that first down for the Cougars. And again, maybe a little momentum now for Van Wert, first and 10. Well, this fair week here in Van Wert, do they, do they grease up the pig for the FFA? <laughs> if there not, were, there the were, only <laughs> version we saw was Brian and Parker. There were pig races out at the fair last night. So, uh, you know, it, it does happen, but I don't know about the grease pig anymore. <laughs> Remember seeing that when I was a kid, back in the day. The incubate throw on first down, as you see. Van Wert will set it up again at their own 31. On the play action, Parker will keep it. Really, that, that Salina defense, again, and the interior linemen, yeah, they're looking to get to the quarterback, but maybe they're not going as hard as they usually do because they want to contain Brylon Parker, try and keep him in the pocket, and right there we see just a short gain for Parker. Makes it third and seven. Here's a third down play, and threading the needle. And the completion, Connor Campbell has it in for enough for a first down. And those two, uh, as we see, so leading, leading receiver on the team is Campbell coming into play tonight. And you can see the connection as the game is going on. Here's Bill, changes direction, and he's upfield, and he's going to take it off. Down the right sideline, Bill with just one man to beat. Does he have the speed? And he does, all the way to the house. A 56-yard burst from Kelton Bill to put the Van Wert Cougars on the board. Their first Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown of the game. Your first call for all your insurance needs from Leland Smith. Just picking and prodding this Van Wert offense, and finally, Caden Bill breaks loose off the right side, the 56-yard scamper. Puts the Cougars up six to three with 31 seconds left in the third. McCracken in for the extra point. This PAT brought to you by Lee Kinsel Sales and Service. And McCracken boots it on through the sticks. Makes him now 14 of 15 on point after tries. Lee Kinsel on Urban Road and Van Wert. Take a look. Pre owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. 7-3 Cougars on the Lodex Jewelry scoreboard. Final 30 ticks of the third quarter when we come back on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Simplified Flooring. We make flooring simple. 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Van Wert with their first score of the game. Not to kick it back to Salida. A 56-yard touchdown run. The big home run play has the Cougars on the board. Now Salina will have the football back, but you know, Dave, you look at how the first, basically the entire first three quarters, Salina had a zero against one of the more high-powered offenses in all of Western Ohio. Yes, and Keldon Bill goes off the right side, give credit to Caleb Bledsoe and Morgan Bigham for opening up that hole, and he scampers for 56 yards. Here comes Salina. They'll need to answer. They don't need to change their offensive philosophy at all, other than the fact that they need to try and get one in the end zone. But they've been able to move the ball against this Cougar defense. They need to do it down in the red zone. Yeah, a field goal will not put them back on top. It might do some good just to get points out of the possession. But possessions in itself, they have come at a premium tonight. These two teams. Only had the football twice apiece in the first half. With the exception of Van Wert, they did grab it for a brief third possession at the end of the first, but nothing came of it. And here Morris wobbles a pass over to Braylon Davis. He sheds a tackle, and he is able to get a first down on the first play from their new drop. Both teams with that philosophy, if we can get the ball out in open space and make one guy miss, a five-yard game becomes a 10-yard or 15-yard gain. And we see it on display right there from Salina as they move the chains. It's first and 10 on their own 43-yard line. And Davis has 
been good for about 80 yards, all purpose through the first couple of weeks. And he's racking them up a little bit through the air. He had that big run earlier, but he has been kind of that safety valve out of the backfield for Salina to eat up the passing yards. Well, the third quarter has expired. And Van Wertz takes a 7-3 lead in a low scoring ball game into the fourth quarter, final 12. When we come back, you're watching High School Football on WOSN. Start with the fourth quarter from Van Wertz, Eggers Stadium. And here's a run for Morris around that right sideline. That produced a touchdown for Van Wert, and it produces a touchdown for Salina. Both of our scores down the same bit of turf. And the first snap of the fourth quarter, an almost identical length, not the same route as Van Wert went, but quarterback Bobby Morris scoots up the sideline for the first Salina touchdown brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance. Salina throws the change up. Bobby Morris is usually the guy throwing the football or handing it off. He runs and does what Braylon Davis usually does, and it throws the Vanward defense off, and they are able to take it to the house down the right side. The extra point is good, and just like that, Salina regains the lead. 11.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Salina 10, Van Wert 7. Some numbers from that third quarter. Uh, Garrett Salina, Bobby Morris, he was four for six in passing for 37 yards. The team rushed the ball for 30 yards. They had 67 total yards of offense. For the Cougars, Brylon Parker, he was two for four throwing the football for 14 yards. He had 11 rushing yards. And then Keldon Bill had 60 rushing yards with 56 coming on that touchdown run. 85 total yards for the Cougars in the third. That touchdown brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. And the point after play brought to you by Lee Kinsel Sales and Service. Lee Kinsel on Irvin Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. 11.50 mark of the fourth quarter. This one long from decided. Look elsewhere in the WBL, you know, as this one is going on, Defiance is the next team on the schedule for the Van Wert Cougars. And Defiance with, at the moment here in this fourth quarter, a touchdown, or actually an eight point lead on St. Mary's. So the Bulldogs with a big win over Wapakoneta a week ago as the ball is out on the return. I believe the Cougars are able to get back on top of it, but you see, we bring that score up in St. Mary's up because of just the the way the WBL early season already not going to go to chalk. That is for sure with uh, the defending champion going down in just the first week of games last week. Papa Canetta, a conference loss, and Van Wert's like, okay, we, well, we got to see him at some point, but we'd like to have a leg up to maybe have a tie, but right now they got their hands full with the Bulldogs from Salina. Here come the Cougars on offense. Again, the jet sweep. Strung out nicely by the Cougars. Small game there. Reese Crew on the carry around the edge. Second down uh, for Van Wertz. Those two scoring plays, you mentioned it, Garrett, carbon copies of each other. One was the running back, one was the quarterback. 56 yards for Bill, for the Cougars. 57 yards for Morris and Salina. Going the same direction and everything. You just don't see that happen very often. Just had to change sides because of the quarter break. A short run down the middle. Bill goes ahead before getting decked by Dalton Chilka. We've mentioned his name a lot tonight. He has been all over the place up front for the Bulldogs. Third down for Van Wert. Just big, shy of the 30. Yeah, another big third down play in this game. Rylan Parker, that edge gets covered up and down he goes. It's, again, it's Chilcott that got over there 
to seal the corner. Didn't see who brought him down. I believe it's Peyton Stongler. He's coming up, enjoying the play. Actually, excuse me, it's going to be Logan Billerman. Those those jersey numbers again, a little, a little yep. tough from yep. the front of the the jersey. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, again, Salina was able to penetrate through the offensive line and create havoc. Parker, he's been slippery back there, unable to be elusive and get away on that particular play. Fourth down, the Cougars have to punt. So Steeman will punt it away, and it goes straight up near midfield, but takes a Van Wert bounce, and will halt at the 46-yard line, and the Cougars giving the ball up on the punt, and you kind of, you, you give Salina obviously excellent field position, but you gotta wonder, okay, when can we get the football back? for sure, I mean, your your defense is thinking three and out, get it right back immediately, but Salina offensively has had enough punches to not have any really quick drives. Yeah, just that long scoring drive on, on that one play, that's the, the play that again is accentuated here to give them the lead back, but Salina has been methodical with their offense, and maybe that quick play, that, that 57-yard touchdown run was a result of them wearing down this Van Wert defense. We'll see what they do here. Off the handoff for Parker Berkey. And he gets cut down. Devin Story on the stop for Van Wert. Two-yard two gain for the Bulldogs. And this is where, if you're Salini, you can't get too conservative because this Van Wert defense is going to stop you if you do so. And... You give this ball back to this Van Wert offense, I know they've only scored one touchdown, but again, you don't want to give them the, the ball. Uh, you don't want to give them possession uh, just because you're being conservative on offense. There's the keeper at Braylon Gabus. They go to the Wildcat look. And so I really think you got to bring Morris back in and let him be the quarterback and, and go with the pass play. Maybe he scrambles. Maybe you go with the quarterback run again. Let's see what Salina decides to do. Morris trotting in from the sideline. Making sure they have the right personnel on the field is Carter All Center. We've talked about it all night long. Big third play, third down plays. We're in the fourth quarter now. It is personified. This is huge. The Morris snap. Looks to throw. And his receiver fell down atop the round, and the throw is incomplete. And I think he may be hurt. That's number one, Caleb Gabus. No, why they tend to him. Take a brief timeout, 831, fourth down for Salina when we come back on WOSN. Punt team is on for Salina as we return to Agro Stadium in Van Wertz. In the air for Xander Jones, and here's a good return for Campbell, but looked like he was going to roll off the tackler. But Wesley Graber finished the job for Salina. Now the Cougars down near their 20 to start the drive with 8.22 to play with. Yeah, Jones flips the field right there, and again, there's an Ohio State football coach that said one of the most impactful plays in the game is the punt, and Salina flips the field. That coach would be? Jim Tressel, one of the most important plays in the game, the punt, and right there, Salina is able to push everybody back as far as the Cougars are concerned. The Cougar defense, they did stiffen up there right there. Now, let's see what this offense can do. So you're saying in that situation, I needed to have my WOSN sweater vest on. You did, tonight. yeah. To get the reference. <laughs> I didn't know, you had me stumped. There you go. But an incomplete pass on first down for Brylan Parker and for Van Wert, that clock is halted at 8.14. They, they want to keep this game lengthened out. If you're Salina, though, you want to get that your hands on the football and milk out what is left. Salina, that big home run play by Keldon Bill about all they have to write home about at the moment as Parker gets around the corner and just this, the pursuit continually outside the numbers by Salina. They are. They are certainly a lateral bunch. They can get outside and pursue your skill guys, and that really tells the tale while their defensive numbers are so good. Yeah, I think that's something. They've improved in all facets of the game from last year to this year, but this defensive squad, just it's a different animal than it was last year. Nicely done. 
There's a fake for Parker. He doesn't need much, but he got stood up. Did he get enough? I don't think he did. And again, right now, if you're Coach Wrecker, I know you're deep in your own territory, but Salina may not let you get the ball back, but he is going to go with the punt. I believe it's the right call. Your defense had them in a three and out the last possession. You're going to ask your defense to step up and do the same thing again. Let's see what Steeman does with this opportunity to punt it away, see if he can flip the field back for his Cougars. In the air. And angling out of bounds, but it's going to take a nice backspin at the 40. And with 7-1, that's where Salina takes over. One of the big moments of the football game, if we rewind back to the second quarter, was a Salina goal line stand, and that is currently what stands in the way for Van Wert. Other than that, I mean, you could be looking at a 14-10 game with Salina trying to take the football and, you know, all things considered, but that is one of the most important plays so far in this football game. Your field goal and your touchdowns obviously put points on the board, but that goal line stand for Salina, it is lingering larger as this game gets older. You're exactly right, Garrett. They had the ball on the one yard line, Van Wert did, and then some penalties both ways, but uh, Van Wert ended up being pushed back a little bit with a couple penalties, unable to put it in the end zone. Here's the snap. And Morris will keep it around the edge and a big block out in front of him by Caden Merlin. Put a Cougar on the back of his shoulder pads. I'm sure Coach Bader has challenged his offense now. Go out and win this game. Eat up the clock, be methodical. Again, Morris ran the ball there a little bit. The whole right side of the offense. It was like student body right, right there, able to pick up five yards. If we can keep Van Wert off the field, we're going to give ourselves a great opportunity to win this football game. Thus far in the fourth quarter, Van Wert only has 12 yards of total offense. Here's the keeper for Gambus. Again, the difference you see with the Van Wert defense, when Gambus has the ball, the, the linebackers and the safeties come up hard because, again, he is running the ball 95% of the time, gets dinged up a little bit here. With Morris, they're a little more hesitant. So that gives Morris the opportunity to run or pass. And again, we have a third and short with Morris coming back in to lead the offensive unit. Switching back and forth. Seems like this part of the field is where they like to do that the most when they get between the 40s. Here's the snap and the pitch out. Gabus has it, went to turn the corner and a potential big play saving hit on the edge for Van Wertz. Carver Harris does that, that shoestring tackle right there. Salina ran that play earlier in the game and also picked up yardage. They go back to it right there, able to move the chains. A nice possession pass for Salina in order to pick up the first down. Now the Bulldogs will set it up inside of Van Wert territory. Nine in the box defensively for the Cougars. And it is, the football's out. It was John Lutz with a huge run. But the ball popped out, and the Cougars take the football back on their second takeaway of the football game, and they got great field position yet to boot. I didn't catch who made that tackle, I'm sorry, but definitely popped it out there. Cougars on the spot to pick it up. A great momentum shift opportunity here. They're going to take the ball in their own 40-yard line with 536. If you're a Cougar fan, what do you say? You want to see them go down the field and score and walk away with a W. Salina, quick change defense. Got to get established right now. Both teams, again, all three timeouts remaining. And there's a reversal. Connor Campbell. Cuts it up, gets to midfield, and he is going to turn it into a game of 11 for first down yardage. 
It's only the beginning of September. It's not close to Halloween, but we see some trickery right there. Campbell makes one guy miss in the backfield, and as a result, he's able to turn the corner and gain enough to move the chains. First down for Van Wert. There's the give. And a short pickup for Bill. And again, you said both squads have all three timeouts. We saw Coach Bader in the first half use timeouts when this Van Wert offense started chugging along. He may need to burn one again here shortly. Bill again. Nice his way ahead for six and a first down. I know timeouts in the first half are different than timeouts in the second, but right now, Van Wert's moving, but I don't think they were set. We have a flag on the play before the ball was snapped. I think we had illegal motion. The sign from the referee was delay a game, the preliminary. But I don't think they were set. False start on the offense. So it's going to be first and 15. First man we're penalty to half. Yeah, and that might just be a blip on the radar the way this offense is moving right now. Let's see how it plays out, Garrett. Here comes Parker's throw. Pressure comes. Chilcock flushes him out. Look at that beauty of a throw down the right sideline, but incomplete. Yeah, a lot of arm right there. He was on the move, did not have his feet set, and still chucked that ball a good 35, 40 yards out of bounds, unable to hook up with his receiver, but man, some real nice arm strength displayed there by Brylon Parker. Kelvin Bill was the intended target. 4.53 mark of the fourth quarter. Here's the keeper for Parker, and he runs right into the arms of Salina's defense, Reese Potcutter. Again, you got to give that defensive line some credit. They sensed that Brylon Parker was going to run the football. Instead of rushing hard, they maintained their lanes, and Parker ran right in to the Salina defender. Number 55, or who was that again, Garrett? I had 52 a pot cutter down. Yes, number 52, pot cutter. Now third and long, Parker to throw. Man gets through the line again. This is the pressure from Cameron Elson, and a throw up the sideline, incomplete. And the pressure is getting there, and I, looking around, looks like Parker might have got some contact during the play, but plain and simple, Van Wert right now, up front is letting the defensive line for Solana apply the pressure. You don't like it, stop it. Fourth and 15, the Cougars are gonna go here. They are on the Salina side of the field. It's a good decision. Just, you don't have many fourth and 15 plays in your playbook. The Cougars are gonna have to come up with some magic. We're gonna have a timeout. The Bulldogs are gonna take it, Garrett. And they will, we'll take it as well. 4.09 mark of the fourth quarter, fourth and 15 for Van Wert's offense, down three when we come back, WOSN. So far, big play of the night for Gainward ahead of us. 4th and 15, 4 and 9 left in the fourth quarter. And Ryland Parker will throw. Looking downfield, he steps into it and lofts it near the 10 yard line, and it is knocked down. Incomplete. And Salina takes over on downs. The pocket just collapsed in front of Parker, and he stepped right into traffic and disrupted his throw. And Salina takes the football back over. And Dave, you mentioned right before our last timeout, you got to wonder, okay, now how, how quickly can we get this football back? Exactly. Now the, the Van Wert defense has got to step up. But you're right, Parker, the, the 
pocket collapsed. I can't believe how far he was able to throw that with contact. It looked like a punt because the way uh, he got hit right when he released it. And again, it could have been a pass interference play with the way that ball hung up there. But the Cougar, excuse me, the Bulldog defenders did a nice job of knocking it down and not committing the penalty. There's the fake for Morris. He's around the left side. He's already run for a long touchdown once tonight. But that window quickly closed in the flat. Yeah, I believe it was Campbell over there on the right side. A great defensive play. Connor Campbell taking down Jeremy Morris. And again, I, the, the Salina offense, they've noticed as well that Morris has an opportunity with some running lanes, trying to keep the ball in his hands and uh, not turn it over via an interception. But on that particular play, no gain whatsoever. But the Bulldogs are churning up the clock right now. We're under three and a half, second and 10. Morris. And I feel like the play clock hit zero. Or would a timeout get called? Timeout Salina, they're down to one with 3-12 left in the football game, but we'll keep it around. And you know, we mentioned throughout the night, a lot of eyebrow raisers around the WBL already through the first week plus of league play. Defiance looks like they're about to polish off their first win over St. Mary's for the first time in a decade. They already had a decade plus drought against Wapakoneta from last week, and here you go, Salina trying to bust the rust off of a four-year drought against Van Wert. Van Wert's next opponent, well, probably the last team a lot of teams in the WBL want to play right now, and that's the Bulldogs next week of Defiance, and they got to make the long trek up to Fred Brown Stadium. As you mentioned, Salina with an opportunity to end the four-game losing streak to the Cougars and the 20 home game winning streak for the Cougars here at Egger Stadium. And that might be the even bigger point as there's an open running room for Gabus. He gets into the open field to the 10 and into the end zone. Another 57 yard scamper for the, for the Bulldogs. It's been from the quarterback position. It's just been two different Bulldogs, one in Bobby Morris, and this time it is the Wildcat quarterback, Braylon Gabus, 57-yard scamper, and that is going to have a lot to do with putting an exclamation yes. point on this game, Garrett. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. That's another touchdown for Salina. Both in this quarter, we had the first play from scrimmage go to the house. And the Lee Kinsel sales and service extra points. Goes on up, Lee Kinsel on Irvin Street in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. We'll take the timeouts here from Van Wert. 3.02 in the fourth. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. Now, Lee, Leland Smith Insurance touchdown for Salina, fouled up by the Lee Kinsel Sales and Service extra point. Lee Kinsel on Irvin Road at Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. 3.02 mark of the fourth, 10-point lead for the Salina Bulldogs over Van Wert. Salina, three minutes and a 10-point lead between them and a 2-0 WBL start and snapping the Long home winning streak for Van Wert. Here's the return for the Cougars and a good one. It's Bill and he's still on his feet. He has two touchdown returns on the kickoffs this year. He won't get a third, but he goes a long way in getting Van Wert set up on this drive just ahead of the 40 yard line with 252 to play. Outstanding return for the Cougars now. The high octane offense, the quick offense. This is what you would need to go to at, at, at this point in the game regardless. But when you run it the whole game, it is your philosophy, you're not panicking because this is what you do all the time. I remember, again, when I was a lot younger, I was like, some teams would score and they'd have a great two-minute offense. I'm like, why don't they run that offense the whole game? Well, the game of football has evolved yep. to that's what you see. Van Wert could score, onside kick, get it back, and there's a lot of time yet in this game 
Uh, again, they'll just need that turnover after a quick score, but not the way you want to start to drive right here. Movement up front will back the Cougars up. 17 to seven again on the Lodox Jewelry scoreboard. And if you're Salina. You're gonna play your safeties yep. deep. Just to say it looked like a deeper formation and Van Wert empties out the backfield. And Parker will sling it out to Campbell. He has it on the screen, tackled pretty quickly. Dalton Chilcott. Out on the stop, he was able to pop off his line position and get to the edge. Yeah, big lineman, you know, when you can get out there in space and get a nice tackle like that, that's one you write about when you get home. That's a fun one right there. And Cougar line stood up and the ball was never snapped, so it looks like that'll wipe out the progress made. Yep, gonna be a false start on the offense. So we said the Salina defensive backfield, they're playing deep. You still have to be cognizant of the fact that you got to keep that receiver who catches the ball in front of you. You got to break down because Van Wert, if they can make one guy miss, something good could happen. Here's Parker with some time. Only rushing three are the Bulldogs. He's got that time. And that's going to be sailed way ahead. 2.20 to go. And we look at two turnovers committed by Salina tonight. But Van Wert, it's almost been leveled out by two turnovers on down. One at the goal line, a stand by the Bulldogs, and one in the fourth quarter on a fourth and long. And that was the result after Salina had fumbled the football. Yeah, that was a great opportunity. Momentum had changed a little bit, but Salina, you got to give them credit on that drive. They were able to sustain a good defensive stand and get the ball back. Third down play for the Cougars. Parker standing in and a wobbling pass over the middle. Intercepted, Tucker Ackley. And he's gonna go down inside the 30. And the Salina Bulldogs, the green and white on the far end of the field, they're feeling it. Tucker Ackley doesn't just intercept the football, but we do have a flag on the play. And this may be a roughing the passer back here. It could be. I don't think they're talking holding right now. So one of those situations, was the quarterback hit after the ball was caught or before? And we may have this interception wiped off the board, but Tucker Ackley does a great job of saying, okay, I got it, I got it, here they come, I don't want to fumble, I'm gonna go down. Again, that's, that's team football right there. The win is more important than the individual accolades, but wow. They're going to put it after the intercept. Okay. They're going, to, they're going to tack it in in front of. Must have been roughing the passer. I didn't see a signal made that you did. So this could be huge because Van Wert maintains possession and gets the ball 15 yards down the field. Here they come. Parker. And he's just going to get to the corner, pick up a couple of yards, and reset with the clock stop at 2.03. So you go from driving nails in the coffin thinking you yep. have an interception and it's your ball to Van Wert still with life here with 2.03 to play, down 10. There's the Parker throw and it's in and out of the hands of Gage Steeman. Steeman would like to have that one back. You can tell right now he's upset with himself for not hauling that one in. I don't know that he would have been able to get a whole lot of yardage on that play anyway. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise because the clock would have kept running. Third and seven will be the down and distance. Van Wert has to get to the 43 on the other side of the field. In the middle, and incomplete. Going for Kelvin Bill, and incomplete. Looked like he was had that in and was looking upfield before securing it. Fourth down. Looked upfield and also saw number 11 coming in his direction. John Lutz makes the, unable to make the catch. That's a tough one right there. I understand, but you got to haul that one in at this point in the game. 
Big fourth down play here. Going to determine the game if Van Wert can't get the first down. Throws it to the sticks. It's caught. Yeah, it looks like the Cougars have enough to move them. They do. They're going to move crew. the chains. Nice job there. Ryland Parker, Parker hooking up with Reese Crew. First down for the Cougars. They're still breathing, Garrett. First down from the 42. Parker over the middle, and Campbell skies up for the opportunity. And he has it knocked away. And I think they may throw a flag here for a defenseless receiver. They're going to talk about it, and they are going to drop it, both of them. So Braylon Gabus goes in for the tackle. Campbell does get the ball or touches the ball before contact, but he had extended for the football. Gave us with the opportunity to come up a little bit, and the officials deem that it is a personal foul. That keeps this drive alive. It's gonna be a first down for the Cougars deep now in Bulldog territory. Couple of big penalties keeping this Cougar drive alive. Here comes Parker, fires it towards the end zone. He has Campbell there, and it's knocked away. Looks like Xander Jones got there to break it up. Xander Jones explodes from the back of the end zone, comes up to knock that ball away. Good pursuit on the pass. Not only physical talent there, but great mental acuity there to read the play and knock it away, resulting in an incompletion. 95 seconds in the ball game. Solana, whale of a job defensively all night long, holding this explosive unit to just one long touchdown. Second down play will come to no avail, and maybe the timeouts will start pouring out here for Van Wertz. Yep, Coach Recker's going to call one right there. He's got all three in his arsenal, going to use one there. I like the running play, knowing, hey, if we don't get much on this, we're going to have to use a T.O., but Van or a or excuse me, Salina's playing so deep that that run option is an option. They just didn't pick up much right there, Garrett. Yeah, right indeed. 17-7 here. A couple of big plays uh, in the football game that we have brought up a couple of times. A, a goal line stand and a, a fumble. In good field position by Solana, picked up by Van Wert. This is an opportunity just in this quarter alone, Dave, that was turned in to what turned out to be a stalled out drive again. So Van Wert's a couple of possessions that I'm sure they'll review and go, man, you wonder what would happen if one or two things would have gone right on those possessions. A couple of extra yards here or there, maybe a, some execution. And that's where it all comes down. And here you are with your back up against the wall with a minute 26 and a third and six in enemy territory, down 10. You're right, Garrett, but right now they got to look to score quickly to give themselves time if they can get an onside kick. And there's a long throw and a holding there. penalty is going to wipe whatever this is out. It's going to be an incomplete pass, but the defense came through and you could see the offensive lineman on the Simplified flooring, instant replay. You can see the hook of the arm around the defender. Textbook holding call, pursuing the quarterback. Good push by the defensive line here late in the game for Salina. Got to give the, the guys a lot of credit for creating that holding situation, and that's going to back it up. But, man, Parker put another, put another pass right on the money, throwing dimes out there. But the holding negates. Uh, the pass, and it was out of bounds anyway. But here we go, third and long for the Cougars. There's a snap and a bobbled, but Parker keeps a hold of it, steps into his throw off balance, and this is going to be broken up inside the 20, incomplete. Nice. On the pursuit, Caden Wurtz. Yeah, Caden Wurtz, nice defensive play right there. Did a great job of not creating the pass interference situation. Goes around the defender, knocks the ball away. And again, the Cougars are, are, are faced with a fourth and long. Game comes down to this play. 
That fourth in game at 113 in this fourth quarter. Two long touchdown runs by Salina. Took them from down three. Excuse me, took them from down to 7-3 to up 17-7. Salina's going to take this time out. Sometimes you're like, well, we're going to let the offense make a decision or talk about what they want to do. But in this situation up 10, I think that's a great timeout for Coach Bader to say, hey, let's make sure we know where we're at with our lanes. We're disciplined. We want to keep the ball in front of us, keep the receivers in front of us as well. And let's, uh, let's, let's put up a stand here and get this ball on downs, turn it over, and let's drive back down 127 with a W in our yep, back pocket. That's right. They just announced the defiance victory over St. Mary's. That's a long drive to make in the WBL and a sweet drive home for Coach Cooper, I'm sure, who has the turnaround happened, was already well underway last year when they got back into the playoffs, but now I think they're definitely firmly on everybody's radar. That's Van Wert's next opponent next week up at defiance. Here we go, the fans from both sides on their feet. Fourth and 15. Here's Parker, back to throw. Here comes pressure, he steps up through it. Fires to an open man in the middle of the field. It's caught, it's a first down for Van Wert. Did he have the forward progress? I believe he did. That was right at the 15 and a whirl of a catch to keep the game alive for Van Wert. What execution for the Cougars right there. And they gotta go to the hurry up. Still two timeouts left, but they want to go. There's the throw in the middle. It's Bill. He has it at close to the five. That's not enough for a first down, so the clock's going to keep rolling. And Coach Recker's got to burn another game breaker here with 54 seconds left in the, the football game. We've teed up the next opponent for Van Wert a few times tonight for Salina. They continue the WBL slate on the road again at Shawnee. So they see two of the newer WBL venues in terms of playing surface back-to-back -back weeks. Shawnee and Bath doing battle tonight. Game tied in the fourth quarter. And here are the Cougars out of the timeout. Quick chat, and they are ready to roll from the six. Second and one. Five wide for Ryland Parker. There's the snap and a roll out to the right. Bill is there near the pylon. That's not his option. Parker back the other side. It's tipped and then caught in the end zone by Reese Crew for the Cougar touchdown. Xander Jones doesn't know how he didn't come up with that interception. It went right through his hands. And the Cougars, who have been hanging on by a thread at times here late in the fourth quarter, are going to go with the extra point, and then they'll tee it up for an onside kick. And man, this game is far from over, Garrett. Another Leland Smith Insurance touchdown. Leland Smith Insurance, your first call for all of your insurance needs. And the lead Kinsel Samuels in service, point after. Goes right through the uprights off the leg of Griffin and McCracken. Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Quick timeout and return to Niagara Stadium here on WOSN. Back at Anger Stadium, one of the Van Wert Cougars have just gotten into the end zone. Another Leland Smith Insurance touchdown. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. And Lee Kinsel seals in service. They tacked on the extra point. Lee Kinsel on Urban Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Onside kick. Yep, Van Wert. For Van Wert. Yep, they initially showed the huddle kick, and now they're just going to go with the conventional onside kick. And Live it's ball. loose. It's Live loose. Ball. Cougars think they have it. And the signal is they do. Ball bounded around, and it is recovered by Van Wert. It's Aaron Dowdy that emerged from the pile with the football with 45 seconds to go. 45 seconds and two timeouts. It's an eternity for the Cougars right now. 
the Bulldog defense coming back out on the field. The nonverbals are not positive for Salina. Momentum is on Vanward's side. We'll see what they can do. We got ourselves a instant classic brewing here, Garrett. And I believe the scoreboard off, I think there's one Van Wert timeout. Back to throw, and Parker delivers, and it's nearly picked off of the hands of Crew. Quickly pursued by Braylon Davis. He and was open, eight. just unable to connect right there. That is definitely who he wanted. Clock stopped with 41 seconds. Again, the defensive backfield still really deep for Salina. Now they're creeping up into more of their normal defensive set. Second down play. Final minute of the football game. Van Wert looking for the improbable, looking for two scores inside the final minute and an incomplete pass behind his intended target, Gage Steeman. Brylan Parker, once he let go of that one, he, he was upset with himself. He jumped, he knew he, he threw it wide of his receiver, his open receiver. Again, it's just like a pitcher when he lets one go and he knows it's out of the strike zone and would like to pull it back. That's a situation for Parker right there on that second down throw. Here's Parker on third down. They need yardage over the middle, incomplete. Another tip ball as Campbell's unable to come down with it a little high just out of his reach and no Bulldog able to beat Johnny on the spot. It helplessly hits the turf if you're a Salina fan. They would have liked to have been able to come up with that, but here we go again. Fourth down conversion has to happen for the Cougars right now. Well, they say cats have nine lives. How many do the Cougars <laughs> have left? Great point, Garrett. Great point. Here we they go. They are down to what feels like one of their last tonight. Fourth down, and Parker flushed. He's got to get around the corner. He's got somebody lined up, and it's knocked away. Incomplete. Broken up by Lutz. No flags on the play. And the frenzy begins for the Salina crowd. Great defensive stand by the Bulldogs. They lose the ball on the onside kick. They step up to the challenge. Van Wert unable to get a completion on four pass plays. And as a result, they're going to be able to get into victory formation, they being the Salina Bulldogs, and come away with a very, very hard fought 17 to 14 victory. Well, they say no wins in this league come easy, and it certainly wasn't easy tonight for either side. A slugfest back and forth as Bobby Morris takes the knee for the Bulldogs of Salina, and that will cap off a 17-14 road victory. They snap a four-game losing streak to the Cougars and 20 consecutive home wins for Van Wert, stretching pretty much that same time period over four years or nearly four full seasons for Van Wert. A new one will have to get underway in a couple of weeks against Wapakoneta. Yeah, uh, Coach Record knew that he was facing a much improved Salina Bulldog squad tonight. This Bulldog squad, they executed to perfection. They had the long drives, Garrett. They kept that Van Wert high octane offense off the field. They contained Brylin Parker. He was not able to make a couple guys miss and go for long gains. And then Salina. They had those third down conversions throughout the contest at crucial times. But when it comes down to it, it was the big play, the big running play. Morris and Gabus both out of the quarterback position, 14 points with identical 57-yard runs. Salina comes away with the hard-fought WBL victory. The Cougars, they'll regroup and be ready to go. But man, you got to tip your cap to the Bulldogs. You know, it's always fun when you and I get together to do these games. Even more fun when we have a game like we just saw. Absolutely. Let's run down the scoring real quick. 30-yard field goal from Zach Graber in the first quarter. That was it for the whole first half, and then we traded touchdowns late. Van Wert with 31 seconds, a Caden Bill 56-yard score. The PAT was good, 57 yards from Bobby Morris from Salina to put the Bulldogs back up 10-7. 57 yards again from Braylon Gabus. Uh, the next possession, 17-7 Salina. Van Wert have the 
A six yard touchdown pass, Parker to Crew in the last minute. Got the point, or got the point after to go. Made it 14, or 17-14. Then, the onside kick recovered by Van Wert, but four and out, the Salada Bulldogs, they made a goal line stand early in this game, and they make the big stand to win it at the end. The offense did their job, the defense definitely did theirs, holding Van Wert to just 14 points tonight. Let's thank our partners tonight on the broadcast this evening. Lavex Jewelry, our scoreboard partner. Instant replay was brought to you by Simplified Flooring. Leland Smith Insurance brought to you all the touchdowns tonight. Lee Kinzel Sales and Service on our extra point attempts. From the whole crew here at WOSN, we will thank you for watching our broadcast tonight. He's Dave Bowen. I'm Garrett Mansfield saying good night from Egger Stadium in Van Wert. The Bulldogs a winner, advancing to 2-1, 2-0 in the WBL with a 17-14 win over the Van Wert Cougars.